I've always loved journeys that challenge the body and mind. When kids arrived, everyone said those days were over. Instead, we have chosen to share a sense of wonder and curiosity. So, with a good map and a lot of diapers, we say goodbye to mom and set out to discover together. Why should the adventure stop when the kids arrive? These are the prior adventures. We love city adventures. So we took on the biggest city in the world, a city so big it's called a mega region. Back in the 80s, the government said, let's build some stuff on the coast. So half the country moved there. The result is 100 million people and over 100 miles of crazy Chinese industrial chaos. It was truly an endless city and it was calling our name. Our plan was to arrive in Hong Kong and immediately transfer to the brand new gleaming super train that takes one hour to go from Kowloon to Guangzhou. It gave us a few minutes of repose to reflect upon the journey, think about the challenge ahead, and enjoy the view as we hurtled through the countryside at over 300 kilometers an hour. This new super train is the thread that will tie this emerging region together into one throbbing powerhouse, no matter what the Hong Kongese think about it. Upon arrival, we would make our way to downtown Guangzhou and then begin our five-day journey south across Dongguan, the massive, amazing Shenzhen, before crossing the border into Hong Kong and making our return home. When we finally got to Guangzhou Station, it was on. I hadn't been in China in a few years, and it was great to be back among the crowds. It took us maybe an hour to get out of the main station. We went up, down, around, through. We finally had to have some soldiers help us get out of the station by lifting the stroller over a barbed wire fence. Our first adventure happened about 10 minutes into our route north to the city when we tried to take a shortcut through the hills. That didn't end well, and we decided no more shortcuts this trip. As we made our way downtown, we got used to the crowds and realized we were probably going to stick out just a little bit. But the stairs, everybody staring. This was clearly going to be a long trip. You know, usually I'm a little self-conscious of how strange I look and stick out in China. But uh, Les and I are just so ridiculous looking. People enjoy staring at us so much that it's basically overwhelmed my powers of self-consciousness. And I find the whole thing a little funny. As dusk fell on our first night, we realized just how far away from home we were, how big the challenge ahead would be, and how jet-lagged we were from the long trip. Day two started with a quick sprint out of town. We were very interested to see the endless job fair advertising thousands and thousands of manufacturing and factory jobs for $600 a month. Along with this progress came sidewalks, and if we had just planned this trip a week later, we would have enjoyed a nice, smooth route. We had a very Chinese realization that they had actually built the subway underneath the road that we were on and it wasn't on the map. And that it continued for two, three more miles from where we already had gotten to at lunchtime. So we're gonna take a quick uh, accelerator button here. We eventually made it into Dongguan, the largest city you've never heard of, and found that very important staple of modern Chinese society, the expat bar. Afterwards, we got to make the world debut of Weston's new neon LED stroller lights designed to match the look 
of tonight's hotel. Day three arrived wet and cold, but we had ground to cover. China doesn't have playgrounds per se, they have weird exercise areas designed for old people. But Weston loved it and he was the toast of the town as he fell off every device they had to offer. And where do you go after a long day of dodging traffic and breathing smog? Well, the mall, of course. The Chinese have brought the American mall to a high art, full of food, shopping, and entertainment. <laughs> Today was going to be a big day as we ran from the high rises on the outskirts of Shenzhen to the high rises in the center of Shenzhen. <laughs> But if you're looking for the future of our planet and our species in all its hyper-urban, dystopian, but really cool beauty, then Shenzhen is it. On day five, our final day, we would strap on our newly acquired bike frame and make the long anticipated but bittersweet kind of border crossing back to Hong Kong. Along the way, we would hang out with an old friend. We would cross over the steep, painful mountains of the new territories, and even spend a few minutes hanging out with the local monkeys. But as we reached the throbbing center of Kowloon, we were reminded that Shenzhen may be the future, but Hong Kong is still the king. So after 110 miles of crazy Chinese survival, Weston and I were confident we could survive the world's biggest city. But we were pretty happy to get in a plane and head back to our village. <laughs> 